Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is Charles, and in this video, we're gonna look at a topic found on the CCNA exam, which is using TFTP to back up our Cisco router configurations. TFTP being the Trivial File Transfer Protocol. Just like any important device on your network, we need to back up our switches and our routers periodically. If we have a catastrophic failure with a device, we don't want to spend countless hours or days recreating and rebuilding those configurations. So let's jump in and take a look at how we can do this. Once again, I'll point out that I am performing this lab in Boson's NetSim, their network simulator designed for Cisco training. If you want to check that out, I've included an affiliate link in the video description below. We do get a few bucks from that, and that helps us to continue to create training content. This is a really convenient alternative to having physical equipment, and it's one of the tools that I use quite often. So when we talk about TFTP, it's really easy to use. It's a very simple command, and you can see our sample network here. We have a single PC connected to a switch, which is connecting into a series of other routers and an additional switch. So a very common way that we might connect into a corporate network in order to manage that. So when we talk about TFTP, the first thing we need to do is to set up a TFTP server. And you need to know the IP address of the machine that the TFTP server is running on. Now within Boson, this is really simple to test out because that functionality is actually built into their PC simulator. Now, if you're trying this on actual equipment, Mac OS has a native TFTP server already running that you can use through the terminal. For Windows, there are various TFTP applications that you can install, such as OpenTFTP or SolarWinds TFTP, lots of other options out there. And you can, of course, also use third-party tools for Mac OS if you prefer not to use the native functionality. So here on R4, the first thing let's do is let's just do a quick show run and take a look at what we've got in place. And you can see that our fast ethernet zero slash zero, we do have an IP address assigned to that, which is 24.37.2.1. And that has a slash 24 subnet mask. So that is configured. And of course we have the host name set as R4 already on this router. And there really isn't anything else configured on this router at the moment. I've put a very basic configuration in place just for our testing purposes. So let's jump over to PC1 now and let's see what we have here. Let's say IP config to take a look at the IP addressing. And you can see that this PC has an IP address of 24.37.2. Dot 252. So that is going to be the IP address of our TFTP server in this case. Just to make sure we have reachability between here and our router, you can see that our default gateway is set to the router's IP address, 24.37.2.1. That's the first router that we have that we're connected to in our network outside of that switch. So let's go ahead and let's just make sure that we can ping that IP address. So we'll say ping 24.37.2.1. Again, the interface for router four, and that is successful. We do see ping replies coming back, so that looks good. Let's go back to router four now, and let's begin looking at how we can back up our configuration via TFTP. So the command we're going to use is copy. And if we take a look at contextual help, we do have several options here. We can do the running configuration, or the startup configuration. So these are the two main parts of a Cisco router configuration file. When the router is up and running, the running config stores the configuration changes in the RAM. So that is a non-persistent means of storage, meaning that these changes are not retained after a reboot. The persistent copy is the startup configuration file. This is kept in the router's NVRAM, the non-volatile RAM, and these changes are of course retained even after a reboot. We can save both or either of these, but saving the startup configuration is typically what we want to do, and that's what we're going to do here. So let's add the startup-config qualifier to our command, and if we look at contextual help once again, we need to indicate that we are using the TFTP option. So we'll say TFTP and we can actually hit enter right here. When we do that, 
you'll see that we're prompted for the address or the name of our remote host, or in other words, of our TFTP server. If we jump back over to PC1, just as a reminder, again, we can see the IP address of this TFTP server is listed right here at 24.37.2.252. So that is what we want to use. 24.37.2.252. We can hit enter. And the next thing we're asked for is a destination file name. You can see that that's going to default to temp.rtr. So I'm just going to name this r4-config and I'm going to hit enter here. Once I do that, you're going to see that very quickly it completes that output. We see a series of exclamation marks at the end indicating that the transfer has happened. Now over on the PC, let's verify that from this side of things. Now I will say that depending on which type of TFTP server software you're using, that's going to determine how you view these backup files. The way you see those might be differently. It could be in a command line type output as we're going to see here, or it could be in a file explorer in a graphical user interface. Within the Boson lab environment, there is a Boson specific command that works on this simulation PC. And that command is show TFTP hyphen configs. When I hit enter, you'll see that I have a single file name listed here, r4-config8463 bytes. So that is the file that we just backed up from router four. Now let's go back onto the router and let's see how we can go the other way. Let's look at how we can pull this backup file into a router from a TFTP server. So back on router four, since we know that part of the information that is saved within that backup file is the host name of this router. One quick thing we can do just to test that is we can actually change the host name. So I'm going to go ahead and go under global configuration mode and I'm going to say host name and I'm just going to call this wrong in all caps. Once I do that, let's exit back to privileged exec mode and let's look at loading a backup file. So let's say copy once again, but this time we want to choose, if we look at those options, the first option we want to choose is actually TFTP. And then we want to say running dash config. Now notice that the order has switched. When we're sending a file to a TFTP server, we say either running config or startup config first, followed by TFTP. When we're loading a backup file onto a router or another device, the TFTP qualifier actually comes first as we see here. So that's very important. Let's hit enter. Again, we're going to be prompted for the IP address of our TFTP server, which is 24.37.2.252. We can hit enter. We're going to be prompted for the name of the file that we're trying to restore onto this router. Of course, that is r4-config. We'll hit enter. And as soon as I hit enter, it processes almost instantaneously. It's a very simple, small running configuration. There aren't a lot of things configured in here, but notice that immediately our command line output here, where our host name was previously set to wrong. Remember we changed it to wrong. It immediately changed back to R4. That's an indicator that this backup configuration was loaded successfully onto the router. So very simple, very easy to do, and certainly a best practice to do this with your production routers anytime you make an important configuration change. It's great to have a TFTP server somewhere in your network that you can dump those configurations onto. I hope you found this content useful and I wanna thank you sincerely for watching.